Hi. I suppose I've got a particle being acted upon by a force of 8 newtons. What's going to happen? Well, that particle is going to want to move to the right. But if we wanted to keep it in equilibrium, in other words, stationary, what we've got to do is apply an equal and opposite force of 8 newtons to it. Well, that's dead simple. But what happens if that 8 newtons wasn't there and we had, say, a force now of, say, 6 newtons acting at 65 degrees to the 8 newton force? Just mark that in there. Now, this particle is going to want to clearly move out here somewhere. There'll be a resultant force acting somewhere in between the 8 newtons and the 6 newton force. Now to keep this in equilibrium, I would need to apply a force then in the opposite direction to that resultant force. Let's say it's P Newtons. Put it in here, P Newtons. And also, what angle would that make, say, with this dotted line? We'll call that angle theta. So that's our question. If this particle is in equilibrium under these three forces, what would the force P newtons be and what would the angle theta be? Well, there's two ways that you can answer questions like this when you've got three forces acting on a particle. One of them, the easiest way really for something like this, is to draw a force triangle. And the other way is by resolving. And I'll show you both methods in this tutorial. And so you can compare which one you think is the easier. OK, well, if we're going to look at the force triangle, then we start off with picking, say, one of these three forces. It doesn't matter which one you pick. I'm going to go first with the 8 newtons. So we'll draw 8 newtons in, something like this. OK, this would be 8 units long. Then we follow it with the 6 newtons. So we start from the end here, and this would be 6 units long. So we just mark that in as the 6 newtons. Now we've seen in the past that the resultant force would act from here to here, going in this direction. But there is no resultant force. Well, there is a resultant force. It's zero because it's in equilibrium. But this force of P newtons would have to be in the opposite direction to the resultant force of these two. So that arrow would be reversed. Let's just put that back in there and reverse the direction round. So that would be P newtons. We form what is called a closed triangle. Now, in order to work out P from the triangle, we need to put some angles in. And we can see that this 65 degrees is the angle between the 6 and the horizontal line here. So we mark that in as 65 degrees. So that means that this interior angle here has to be 115 degrees. And we can work out P now quite easily when we know two sides and the opposite angle. Because we can use the cosine rule. So by the cosine rule, let's just put that in here. By the cosine rule, what are we going to have? Well, it will be p squared equals the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So that would be 8 squared plus 6 squared minus twice the product of those two sides. So that would be 2 multiplied by 8 multiplied by 6 times the cosine of the opposite angle. 115 degrees then. And if you work this out, you'll get that P squared turns out to be 140.571 and so on. OK? And now to get P, you just need to square root that value. So square root that, 140.571 and so on. And it turns out that you get 11. 856 and so on Newtons. Well, we'd want to give that to some degree of accuracy, so I'll go for three significant figures, and that would be 
11.9 newtons to three significant figures. Now, as for the angle theta, where does that appear in the triangle? Well, if I was to think of the dotted line through there, that's the angle theta, but it's not in the triangle. But it's equivalent to this one down here, because we've got alternate angles, two parallel lines here. So to work out theta, we could use the cosine rule, because we know all three sides. I'll leave it up to you to do that if you want to use the cosine rule, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use the sine rule, because I think it's quicker. So if we're doing that, then by the sine rule, it would be sine theta compared with the opposite side, which will be the 6 here, equals the sine of this angle, 115 degrees, compared with or divided with the opposite side, the P. So you use the unrounded version, so that would be 11.856 and so on. And all I need to do now is just multiply both sides by 6, so that gives us sine theta equals 6 multiplied by sine of 115 degrees and divide that by the 11.856 and so on. And work that out in your calculator and you should find you get 0 0.4596 and so on. To get theta we just need to take the inverse sine of this value and you'll find that you get 27 point two nine nine and so on degrees. I'm going to round that up to say two significant figures and that would be 27 degrees to two significant figures. Okay well that's one way of getting P and our angle theta that it acts but it's not the only way as I said earlier. What we could do is we could resolve and to resolve, what I do is I look at two perpendicular directions. And for a question like this, it would be sensible, I would have thought, to resolve in the horizontal sense and the vertical sense. We'll just draw a dotted line down here for the vertical sense. Now, when it comes to resolving, say, horizontally, which way do you resolve? Well, it doesn't matter. I'm going to pick to the left though purely because it would make the term containing the force P positive. But that's up to you. So when we resolve to the left, we're looking at how much force acts in the horizontal sense. Well, if it's in equilibrium, there's going to be no overall force. There'll be zero resultant force then. So let's look at the components then, or what forces act in this horizontal sense to the left. Well, first of all, taking this force, we need to split this into two components because not all of P acts along the dotted line to the left. So the two components of P would be one to the left and one downwards. The one downwards has no effect because it's at right angles to the direction we're resolving in. We're only interested in the component to the left, which contains the angle. So it will be P cos theta. Remember, when it contains an angle, it's cosine. When it excludes the angle, it's sine. So P cos theta that way. All of 8 newtons acts along this horizontal direction, but 8 newtons acts in the opposite sense, so it's going to be minus 8. As for the 6 newtons though, because that's inclined to the horizontal, we need to think of splitting this into two components. And that would be one to the right and one upwards. The one upwards has no effect because it's perpendicular to this direction. We want the one to the right, which will be 6 cosine 65 degrees because it contains the angle. So it's going to be minus 6 cos 65 degrees. That's our resultant force, but because it's in equilibrium, it's going to equal zero. Now what we do in equations like this is we make P cos theta the subject. So if I was to add 
8 and 6 cos 65 to both sides, you'll end up with P cos theta then equaling 8 plus 6 cos 65 degrees. And if you work that out on your calculator, then that comes to a value of 10.535 and so on newtons. And I'm going to call that equation 1. We'll return to that later on. Now we need another equation because we've got two unknowns here, p and theta. And we resolve then in the perpendicular sense. And it's up to you whether you resolve upwards or downwards. I'm going to go downwards because it will keep this term positive. So we'll resolve downwards. So again we go through all the three forces. Let's start with this force of P Newtons then. We need to split it into two components because P doesn't act totally down. The component downwards would be P sine theta because it excludes the angle theta that we've got here between the two directions here. So it would be P sine theta. Now we go on to the 8 newtons. Well, none of that acts downwards because it's perpendicular to the direction. As for the 6 newtons, well we've seen that we split that into two components, one up one to the right. The one to the right has no effect because it's perpendicular to our direction. The one upwards would be 6 sine 65 degrees because we're excluding that 65 degrees. You could if you wanted say 6 cos 25 but there's no point in doing that I feel. I always work off the angle that I'm given. Okay so it'd be minus 6 sine 65 degrees. And that's the resultant force downwards, but because it's in equilibrium, that resultant must be zero. If we rearrange this by adding 6 sine 65 to both sides, we end up with P sine theta equals 6 sine 65 degrees. Work that out on your calculator, and that comes to 5.4378 and so on, Newtons. And I'm going to call that equation 2. Just squeeze that in there. Now we've got to work out what P and theta are. And the way we do this when we've got equations of this format is to call upon a particular identity. We should know from core maths that sine theta over cos theta is identical to tan theta. And if we do equation 2 divided by equation 1, we create that situation because the p's would cancel one another out and you'll just have sine theta over cos theta, which is tan theta. So you have tan theta equals the 5.4378 and so on divided by 10.535 and so on. And if you work that out, you end up with 0 0.5161 and so on. So to get theta, all you need to do is do the inverse tan of 0 0.5161 and you'll end up with 27.299 and so on. Which when rounded is going to give you back that 27 degrees to 2SF. Now to get P... All you need to do is substitute for theta in either 1 or 2. Work out what cos of the 27.299 degrees is and then you should be able to work out what P is. And the same applies if you use this equation, just work out what the sine of the angle was. There is an alternative though. Quite a lot of people use this idea. They do 1 squared plus 2 squared. Equations 1 squared plus 2 squared. Why do they do that? Well, what happens is that you get p squared cos squared theta. I'll just write this in here. p squared cos squared theta plus p squared sine squared theta. p 
slightly squared sine squared theta equals 10.5 odd squared plus 5.4 odd squared. Now I haven't really got much room to write this in here so what I'm going to do is just write 1 squared plus 2 squared okay just to represent those two decimals there. Now what happens is you can factorize this side and you end up with pulling p squared out the front and you get cos squared theta plus sine squared theta and that's going to be equal as I say to those two decimals squared and added together. We'll just put it for short there. But cos squared theta plus sine squared theta well that's another identity it comes to 1. So that leaves you with p squared equals 10.5 odd squared plus 5.4 odd squared. So to get p all you need to do is square root that. So normally what we tend to do is go straight to this result. p will equal the square root then of 10.535 and so on squared plus 5.4378 and so on squared. And I'll leave you to work that out but you're going to get this number here which when rounded is going to be your 11.9 newtons to 3SF. Okay, well I hope that's given you some idea then of how you can find out a force like P newtons and the angle then when you've got three forces either by using the force triangle or by the resolving method. As I said earlier I know that I would generally prefer this method but as you'll see later when we've got more than three forces here you're going to have to resort to resolving. Okay well you'll see some examples then that will follow giving these uh, ideas. So I hope you'll find them useful.